The north of Ireland, 20 years of war, 3,000 deaths, more than 30,000 injured, and countless arrests and years of prison. A war in which, day in and day out, the British security forces confront the Irish nationalist movement and its hidden secret army, the IRA, the Irish Republican Army. On the streets outside there, in West Belfast, there are guns, there are explosives, there are people preparing operations to put together against British troops. This is an IRA active service unit operating in St. James's area of West Belfast. They're preparing themselves for an ambush on British troops, maybe mobile, they may be on foot. To a visitor coming to West Belfast, this type of operation must seem amazing or even impassable when you take into consideration the amount of surveillance, the amount of armed troops there are on the ground. Yet, day in, day out, this type of operation takes place. This present moment... In the 1970s, in the Brendan Hughes was considered by the British Army to be an important leader of the IRA. Arrested in 1972, he soon escaped from the high-security prison of Long Cash. Recaptured in 1973, he has spent 13 years in prison. The best will in the world cannot stop what is happening here because they do not have the minds of the people. Ireland was divided in 1922 after six years of war between the British Army and the IRA. In national elections at that time, the Irish voted overwhelmingly in favour of independence. What followed was a compromise in which London agreed to withdraw from the 26 counties of Southern Ireland. In exchange, Britain was to maintain control of six counties in the north six counties that contained most of the country's industry as well as a majority of loyalists, descendants of British settlers who wished to remain in the United Kingdom. With the support of London, the loyalists in Northern Ireland were to control all economic and political powers. Meanwhile, the nationalists who had fought for a united Ireland were to suffer from systematic discrimination in housing and employment. Furthermore, special laws permitted arbitrary arrest and imprisonment of political opponents. Not surprisingly, Northern Ireland is a state that has never been at peace. Flashpoint area we do have here and over here. This is a lot of shooting that takes place along this area here. So we've always been very careful when patrolling in this particular area. Uh, Papa 70, Roger. You may notice the special protected glass weapon in our vehicles here. These are actually built up to help to uh, prevent or protect us from drogue bombs and that type of thing. These are the new bombs they throw at us, which can go through steel an inch and a half thick. So uh, th these vehicles are tied to be. Uh, give us some, protect, some protection from those type of uh, devices. The war in Northern Ireland has ironically become one of the state's biggest industries. 
20,000 soldiers, 13,000 policemen, 3,000 prison guards, and countless other security posts. A major source of employment for the loyalist community. But the work is dangerous. Members of the security forces are daily targets of the IRE. Sometimes they would reckon that the police will stop at such and such a point, say that at a lamppost, and at that lamppost in the waste bin, you'll find maybe a bomb in it which will explode. In other words, just try and get as many casualties as possible. Well, what's happening at the moment is uh, we have the area cleared. There's been a call has been received uh, from two anonymous callers stating that there's a 200 pound bomb uh, in this premises here. Uh, we have now uh, carried out uh, a cursory search of the area and we've cleared all vehicles as you can, as you can see. This is happening every day of the week in Belfast. Uh, it's one of these things which we've come to live with. You can see now how quickly we got here and we're able to clear areas in the shortest possible time. Therefore, if a bomb does go off, to minimise injury. Patricia McDade and Cathy Stanton, Irish nationalists, were arrested in July 1983 carrying explosives. Four years prison. and um, box climbers. And they were and put us down and then the jeeps came and waited away and then there was two other guards caught round the house, round the street we came out of and um, they brought us round now and left the demons and then brought us to Wimpbound Barracks and then from there on to Castle Ray. So they did. And I think the peelers were more nervous than we were. They were shaking. They obviously knew what we had. Do you know, and um, when you join up, you're expecting either to be lifted or you know, you're not given any false pretenses about this life being involved. Like, you know, that you're going to end up in jail sometime or dead. dead or whatever. Like, you know, the consequences, like you're taking on. These are the bullet holes, they were fired on an upward angle because obvious whoever knew who'd done it knew the size of Brown. So they fired upward. As you can see, the strike marks up here. Down here. An extensive damage that's done around the half. There's also a hole here. Brendan Davidson, member of the IRA, killed by loyalists in July 1988. Got the door open, they call me on open fire. The, right, the bullets come through the door, and one hit Brennan on the forehead. His window, bulletproof. The gunman obviously not ever been in the flat before. Knowing that there must have been collusion with the security forces on this point, 